Hello, this is Danny Blythe from the College of Integrated Chinese Medicine looking at six stages and four levels. Um, please pause and read. This is for acupuncturists and herbal students only. So why learn this? You can learn um, how pathogenic factors penetrate through the body's defences. Knowing their location not only helps treatment but also prognosis and advice. You can understand lingering pathogenic factors and learn a bit more about Chinese medical history. So the six stages, or more accurately, the six channel pattern identification. So this concept was first discussed in the Su Wen, which is the plain questions. Although it was a little different to how we understand it now. It was a book written by Zhang Zhongjing um, called the Shang Han Lun on cold damage, which really developed this idea. It was originally two books that got divided up by the doctor who wrote the Pulse Classic. And this discussed when cold and the way it penetrated the skin um, and progressed deeper and deeper into the body. So the six levels are the six pairs of channels. The Tai Yang is the bladder and small intestine. The Xiao Yang is the gallbladder and triple burner. The Yang Ming is the stomach and large intestine. The Tai Yin is the lung and spleen. The Xiao Yin is the kidney and heart. And finally, the Jui Yin is the pericardium and liver. So if you think about where these channels are, you've got the bladder and the small intestine, the most lateral, most yang on the outside. The gallbladder and triple burner is the intermediate. And the stomach and large intestine as the most medial and the most yin of the yang. So you can see how these pairs of channels are quite similar. This is the same with Tai Yin, lung and spleen, being the most lateral or the most yang of the yin organs. But the Xiao Yin and the Jui Yin get a little more mixed up, where the heart and kidney seem deeper than the pericardium and liver. So we can also think of the Chinese clock running from lung, large intestine, spleen, stomach, or the flow of qi in the channels from the chest to the fingers, from the fingers to the head, from the head down to the toes, and from the toes back to the chest. And then again from the chest to the fingers, the fingers to the head, head to the toes, um, toes back up to the chest. So you can see that um, Yang Ming, Tai Yang, and Xiao Yang are next to each other. And that Tai Yin, Xiao Yin, and Jui Yin make up the other three pairs. So the Neijing describes these pairs of channels as opening, pivoting, or uniting. So Tai Yang opens to the exterior. Xiao Yang is the hinge. We'll see how this works later in terms of infectious disease. And Yang Ming unites. So the most Yin of the Yang organs, the digestive system. Tai Yin open, so they spread qi around the body and they're the most yang of the yin organs, the lung and the spleen. The Xiao Yin pivot, you think of the heart and kidneys as being the central pivot, the control of yin and yang and heat and cold in the body. And the Jui Yin unite, they unite the blood, unite the interior. The Ling Shu also discusses how much qi and blood are in each of the channels. And this can be important in treatment. So for example, the Yang Ming are full of qi and blood for stroke and atrophy. These channel pairings are also important for understanding some point functions, like triple burner points for um, liver yang rising headaches, and for choosing points for treating channel problems. Dr. Shen also equated Tai Yang to the nervous system um, Yang Ming to the digestive system, Xiao Ying to the circulatory system, and the others to the organ system, which is interesting if you think of shock affecting the exterior, the nervous system, bladder and small intestine, and upsetting the heart and kidney qi, and this strange pairing of the gallbladder and the triple burner, um, the extraordinary foo, and the organ that doesn't have a form and that controls the Yuan Qi. So enough of that and on to the uh, six stages. 
at the Taiyang stage, which we said was the bladder and small intestine, we have an external invasion of wind cold. So the Wei Qi goes to the surface um, to fight off the invasion. So we get chill, chills and fever as the fight goes on. The pulse is floating as the energy goes to the surface. Aversion to cold, we know that Wei Qi controls temperature um, and it also controls sweating. So no sweating. The bladder channel um, is affected. So we get an occipital stiffness and headache and the flow of qi, the normal descending of lung qi is stopped. So we get symptoms like runny nose with the white watery discharge, sneezing, cough. So there are two flavors of a Taiyang level. The first is cold damage. It's a stronger presentation than a full condition. So the cold is predominant, so there's no sweating because cold closes the pores down. Aversion to cold and the symptoms tend to be stronger. So stronger body aches, breathlessness, asthma, and the pulse is floating and tight. So we need to strongly promote sweating to eliminate the wind cold. The other variation is called wind strike. So this is a milder presentation with underlying deficiency. So here there's slight sweating, the Wei Qi isn't strong enough, um, and aversion to wind rather than aversion to cold, and milder symptoms, so mild aching, floating slow pulse. So regulating the yin and the wei, the yin we think of as being construction, sometimes a nutritive qi, and the wei is our defense. You can also think of this as being like soldiers, the ones that go to actually fight and the ones that are left back at the camp. So regulating the yin and the wei really means tonifying the yin qi, points like stomach 36 or herbs like um, da zao to strengthen the wei and get a stronger defense. So we have to release the exterior but we also have to support the yin qi. So the Shanghan Lun also talks about accumulation of water or great, greater yang fu pattern where it affects the bladder organ as well as the channel and also accumulation of blood but we're not going to worry about that too much for now. If the pathogen penetrates deeper it goes to the yang ming stage the stomach and the large intestine so if you think of a cold turning into a chest infection or um, a chill turning into the flu and here we get the four bigs big sweating big fever big thirst and big pulse overflowing rapid pulse and again there's a two variations of this there's a channel pattern which is said to not have four or to be a heat presentation and with this we get the four bigs along with red face restlessness irritability tongue coats yellow pulses overflowing and rapid and then we get a version with form or a fire manifestation. So if you think that fire damages the body fluids, so we get constipation, fullness, masses, um, and disturbs the shen. So you can get delirium and the nasty tongue coating. So with this pattern, you have to not only clear the heat from the chi level, but you also have to activate the bowels. So with the previous pattern, we're just clearing heat from the chi level with this pattern you have to activate the bowels as well. So if the disease is located at the Shaoyang stage which is the gallbladder and triple burner it can be stuck between the interior and the exterior sometimes said to be at the level of the membranes so this is often stuck lingering pathogenic factor cyclic problems recurrent or subacute problems. We get alternating fever and chills. As the pathogen goes between Taiyang level chills and Yangming level fever, or as the body battles with to try to push off the pathogen and then gives up, we get heat rising, rising up through the gallbladder channel. So a bitter taste, nausea and vomiting, blurred vision, dizziness, irritability. And there's often fatigue in this pattern too. We also have a blockage in the gallbladder channel, so fullness or distension of the hypochondrium and chest. Pulse is often wiry and the tongue is often 
half coated only on one half. The treatment principle here is harmonizing. So now we have disease located at the level of the zhang, the yin organs. The tai yin stage, essentially um, spleen and lung yang deficiency with internal cold and sometimes with some damp. And prognosis is still good. Tiredness, abdominal fullness, no appetite, diarrhea, nausea, no thirst. When the disease is located at the Shaoyin, the heart and kidneys, it's thought to be more serious. And there's a cold type, which is essentially heart and kidney yang deficiency with internal cold. And there's a hot type, which is essentially heart and kidney yin deficiency with empty fire. At the Jue Yin level, liver and pericardium, this is much more serious. So there's heat above, cold below, and if it's severe, the yin and yang might start to separate and even collapse. So for Tai Yin, we're tonifying. For Shao Yin, we're tonifying. For Jue Yin, we're warming and harmonizing. So it's tempting to think of these as like syndromes, but they're not. They tell us where the disease is located. So if you think of Tai Yang level, like a head cold, at this stage, we need to release the exterior and help sweating. If the Zheng Qi isn't strong enough, the pathogen might go deeper and enter the Yang Ming stage. So here, remember, we get the four bigs. So here the person's sweating, they're feverish, no chills, they're thirsty and they're gulping fluids down and the pulse is rapid and overflowing. Or it might lodge in the Shaoyang level at this halfway house or the hinge. There's no time limit on any of these and neither are they separate locations. So you might find um, that you're showing some signs of Tai Yang and some signs of Yang Ming. It's between the two. Or as you commonly see in things like ME, you get a mixture of Tai Yang and Shao Yang. So think of a pathogenic factor trying to penetrate deeper into the body whilst the Zheng Qi tries to throw the pathogen off and the six stages gives us a map of whereabouts the disease is located. So that's a quick whiz through the um, six levels. If you want to find out more you can pause this um, bibliography and further reading.